In this video we're going to take the vectors that we created in the first section of this tutorial and use them to build the model that you can see on the right hand side of the screen here. I'm going to use a combination of the two rail sweep and the create shape tool along with a number of the editing options within Aspire in order to make this model. Let's go into a copy of the software now to begin. If you've just worked through the vector layout part of this tutorial then you should have a design that looks like the one I've got on the screen here. If not then you'll want to open the file we created in that section. To do that come up and click on file open under file operations and from the project folder for this example select the file coffee sign vectors.crv3d and hit the open button and that'll get you to the starting point here. Next I'm going to come up and click on the icon to tile the windows vertically so we can see the 2D view on the left, the 3D view on the right. We're going to come down and click on the modeling tab and for our first shape we're going to use the two rail sweep function. So I'm going to come up and click on the icon for two rail sweep. For this we need to select two drive rails so I'm going to select the outermost vector, shift and select the next vector in from that and click on the button to use selection. Next I'm going to click to select my cross section and I'm going to click to attach that to my first drive rail. Now we can see by the way the lines are shown here that we've got a slight problem. It's going to connect the start point for each of my vectors and the start point for this vector is down here and the start point for this vector is down here. So what I want to do is have a point on this inner vector that's around here. So I'm going to put the mouse over that point there going to right mouse click and choose the option to insert start point and we can see that's now adjusted those lines as they flow around the part so that they look a lot better. Now if I hit apply at this point in time and we look at that we can see that doesn't look too bad but if I look closely in the corners I've got a bit of twisting going on. I haven't got perfect mitre cornered there and that's because when the software creates a two rail sweep it's like two cars going around a track and so if the track's longer on the outside then that has to go faster to get back to the same point at the end here. As such these will get out of sync. Now we could either manually add cross sections in all these corners or if our vector has the same number of nodes both on, the, on both drive rails then we can right mouse click over the cross section at the start here and the option to add to rail nodes will be available to us in this case it is. So if I check that we can see it's going to add these points across these cross sections across each of these points. Now if I hit apply and we zoom in on the corner there I can see I've got a nice clean mitre effect corner. The other thing that we want to do here is fill in the middle part of this shape. So I'm going to choose the option to fill center of inner closed vector rails, hit apply again and that's just going to fill that in with a flat surface for me. I'm happy with that at this point in time so I'm going to change the name of that and we'll just call it base, hit apply and close and we've created our first component and we can see it added to the component tree here. Now I'm just going to uncheck that component for a moment and I'm going to model uh, the leaf motif we've got here. I'm going to start by selecting this circle, click on the icon to create shape from vectors. I'm going to use a round profile, push the angle for this up to 90 degrees, base height 0 and I'm going to set scale to exact height here and actually type in a value of 0.25 hit the space bar to apply that. So what that's created is a shape that's got a nice hard edge here with our 90 degree angle that's then flattening off or rounding off to a height of 0 0.25 inches. Now I'm just going to call that component dome. I'm going to set that to merge and hit close. The next component I'm going to create here is going to be the leaf. So if I just click and zoom in here, I'm going to select this vector, shift and select this vector, click on the icon to go into the two rail sweep and click on the use selection button. I'm going to select my cross section here and hit apply and we can see what we've got there is not exactly right. And If I look closely I can see that the arrow heads on each of my rails are going in opposite directions. So I'm just going to right mouse click over the second rail and choose the option to reverse rail and then hit apply in order to change that. 
So that looks better. I can see that where it overlaps here, the two shapes are adding together. So I want to change the combine mode to merge so that they blend in there. I can also see that the software is maintaining the height of the cross section all the way along here. I would actually like it to taper down as the width of my drive rails gets uh, thinner. The distance between the drive rails reduces. So I'm going to check the option to scale cross section with width. Hit apply again and now we can see that shape tapering up and down. I'd also like to control the height of this very precisely, so I'm going to check the option to scale to height and enter a value of 0.25 inches. Let's change the name here to leaf, hit apply again, and there we can see we've uh, changed the shape. We've maintained that the highest point on this is going to be uh, 0.25 inches, and I'm happy with the way that looks, so I can go ahead and hit close. Next, let's go ahead and select that component. I'm going to hold shift down and select this line. I want to use this as a mirror line here. So with that selected second, I'm going to come up, click on the icon to mirror selected objects. I'm going to uncheck the option to flip about job center here. Just click on the option to flip about line. And we can see we've got create a mirrored copy checked. So that's created another copy of it and not just mirrored the original. We can go ahead and hit close. And now what I'm going to do is select these three components that we've just created there and I'm going to group them together because I want them to act as a single sub-assembly within the design. So with those selected, I'm going to click Group Selected Objects. I'm going to right mouse click on that and rename that and we'll call that Leaf Group and click in order to accept that. Now I want to undraw that component group we just created. I'm going to switch back on the base component here. Just click in the 2D view and click the icon to zoom to fit. Next I want to create a recess shape between this circle and this circle. So I'm going to select those two vectors holding the shift key. Come up and click on the icon to create shape from vectors. I would like this shape to have angled sides with an angle of 60 degrees. And I want it to limit the shape to half an inch, so it's actually going to flatten off when it gets to half an inch. If we call this circle recess and hit apply, we can see at the moment, if we look at that, if we spin it around, we're actually creating a positive shape, and that's because we've got a positive angle in here. We could either change this to a negative angle and then continue to add the shape, or I can just change this combine mode to subtract from the other components. So there if we set it to subtract, now we're getting this nice angled recessed shape. I'm going to go ahead and hit close. The next thing I'd like to do is import an image and create a texture that will go at the base area of our circle here. In order to do that I want to make sure the texture will completely cover this circle here. If I select that circle and we look at the very bottom of the interface here, it's showing me the width and the height of my selected object, and I can see that circle is 20 inches. I'm going to use that information in a moment to scale our texture. Now I'm just going to click to deselect that. I'm going to come up and click on the icon to create a component from a selected bitmap. If we don't have an image selected in the program itself, then that will allow us to browse the disk, and here in the project folder there's an image called coffeebeans.jpg. I'm going to select that, and hit open and we can see the software automatically create a component from it. The light areas for this will make the high parts of the component and the dark areas will make the low parts and everything else will just be scaled in between. Next I want to select that component. I'm going to come over, click on the icon to set selected object size. I'm going to check link XY and I'm going to enter a height of 21 inches, say to make sure it's big enough to cover our circle hit apply and close. Next with that component still selected I'm going to hold shift and select the circle again come over and click on the icon to align the selected objects and click this option here to align the center of those two selected items. And that'll just move the component up so it's centered on the circle. At the moment our coffee bean component is just being added to everything else in the component tree and we can see that's the last thing in the list here it's set to add. 
what I want to do is right mouse click on this, go to combine mode and change it to merge so that it's just blending through all the other components. Now if we just maximize the 3D view and have a look at it, we can see there's quite a lot of jaggedness in the component created from the image. Most images that you get will have quite a lot of noise in them. This is to do with the way that they're compressed down in order to make the file size smaller. What we can do in order to help us reduce this effect is to use the smoothing tool in the software. So if we just go back to an ISO view, click on the icon to tile the windows again. I'm going to make sure to just click and deselect everything else, select just my coffee beans component and come up and click on the icon to apply the smoothing filter to the selected component. Just give that a moment to process and then I'm just going to set this to about three quarters of the way along here. Maybe we'll actually go all the way along. We'll just smooth that as much as we can and hit OK. So you can see that's reduced a lot of the noise in the image, giving us a better looking part. It's also quite high at the moment, so I want to reduce the height of this down. So I'm going to click on the properties or the wrench icon here and I'm going to change this shape height to be 0.2 inches and hit the space bar and so now we can see we've just reduced that height down and that's going to allow us to create other components in here that stick out above this texture. Now I'm just going to close the properties and the last thing I want to do with this component if we just click to deselect it is to trim it in between these two vectors here. To do that I'm going to select the component and then I'm going to have to look very carefully in order to select the right vectors. I'm going to hold the shift key down and select this vector. Still holding shift I'm going to select this vector so I've got these two circular vectors selected. We had the component selected first and now we can come up and click on the icon to clear the area of the selected component outside the selected vectors. So now we can see we've just cropped that component back to those circular vectors there and now all we can see is the area inside of that that sticks out above the other components in the part within that area of the job. Now let's create the component for the text inside that circle. So I'm going to select the word fresh, shift and select the word coffee, click on the icon to create shape from vectors, I'm going to stick with the angle profile and enter an angle of 75 degrees. I'm going to continue to use the limit to height option but this time I'm going to set the height to 0.4. I want to make sure the height of the text does not come above the edge of our main component here. I'm going to set this to merge in so that it just blends in with the texture and the other components around it and we'll just enter the word text here, hit apply and close and there we can see if we zoom in we've created our angled sided text. Next I think I'd just like to round off the top edge of that text. So I'm going to click to deselect the vectors, select just the component there and come up and click on the smoothing filter icon again. Just give that a moment to process and now I'm going to set the smoothing for these about halfway along with the slider. We can see how that's just rounded off the top edge of our text there. When I'm happy with that I can hit OK. Next we're going to switch on our leaf group component again and adjust the height of that so it sits above the texture. i am come down and switch on the component there. You can see that we can't see anything that hasn't appeared in the 3D view. I believe it's high enough that it should be sticking up through the texture here so some other reason must be stopping that from appearing. If you're not sure of what's happening, the best thing to do in a case like this, where a component isn't behaving as you expect it to, is to come over and switch off everything in the component tree and then start at the top and switch on one thing at a time so that you can try and identify where a component might be disappearing or how it may not be combining as you expect. So I'm going to start by switching on our base component here, then if I switch on our next component group I can see what the problem is because this is set to merge, it's merging in with our base component and effectively disappearing under it. So when everything else is added after that it's just being done in effect on top of the base. So what we would need to do if we want this leaf group to merge in is change the order so that it's not merging in with the original base component. If we switch that off again we can see if we subtract the circle then merge the coffee beans and the text in we get this 
and so if our leaf group was actually merging at the end of all this all these other interactions would have happened first and that would probably look correct so we just click and drag this down to the bottom of the list and now switch it on we can see we're actually going to see that in the 3d view and that's because we've got the other components combining with each other before this object is merging in with them whereas before it was just merging in with the first component because of its order in the list now we can actually take that component and we can see that's kind of blending and merging with the texture around it so I want to raise it up so that it's above the texture with it selected I'm going to click on the wrench icon to adjust its properties and I'm going to add a base height of 0 0.2 inches and hit the space bar to apply that. Now I can hit close and we can see that component is raised clear of all the texture around it. Next with that selected I want to mirror it across to the other side of the job so I'm going to click on the icon here to mirror selected objects. I'm going to choose the option to flip about job center, choose the option to create a mirrored copy and then click on the icon or the button here to flip horizontal we can hit close and we can see that this new component we can see its grayscale above the texture and that's because it's been created more recently than the other components if we wanted to see the component for our other leaf group sitting above the texture then we could right mouse click choose 2d preview and choose the option to move to front the grayscale order has absolutely no effect on the model that you see in the 3d view that is determined entirely by the order that you see the components in the component tree and the combine mode that's set for each component or group of components. Last set of shapes that we need to model are the coffee beans in the dish that sit in the middle of the sign. I'm just going to zoom in on them and click on the zoom box, drag this around the center circles here, click back to selection and then that will exit out of the zoom mode. Now I'm going to select this vector that represents the back bean here and while I'm modeling these it's probably going to be easiest for me to undraw all the other components so I'm just going to uncheck the box next to component tree there I'm going to click on the icon to create shape from vectors I'm going to push that up so that it's 90 degrees and I'm going to choose the option to scale to height 0 0.2 inches we'll call that back bean and I'm going to set that to merge and hit apply. Let's just zoom in to the 3D view here so we can see the shape we've created. Next I'm going to click start new component. I'm going to select what will be the bean in the foreground. Go with the same values, 90 degree angle, scale to height 0 0.25, combine mode set to merge still and we'll call this front bean and hit apply. And you can see the two shapes blending together there. What I will need to do is tilt up my front shape so that it sits over the back shape. And I'm going to do that here by choosing the tilt option, clicking on set anchor, clicking here and here. We can see if we tilt that around that the default of 10 degrees is very, very high. That's too high. So I'm just going to bring this down maybe around about 4 degrees, maybe even a little less than that, sort of 3.6 there. So that looks OK, as long as I've got a hard line giving me the differentiation between the two shapes there. Then I'm going to click on Start New Component again. I'm going to select this vector here, this kind of slit in the top of the bean. I'm going to choose the Angle Profile, set this to 45 degrees, choose the option for No Limit, and then we're going to set this to Subtract, and we'll call this Crease, hit Apply, and close if we're happy with the way that looks. Now I'd like to group these three components together, tilt them up a little to add a bit more definition to the back edge of the shape and then smooth them in order to make a single component that will sit within our dish. Let's just click in the white space in the 2D view to deselect that vector. I'm going to come over to the component tree, I'm going to select the back bean component hold shift down and select the last component in the list so that all three of those components we've just created are selected come up and click on the icon to group the selected objects then I'm going to right mouse click on that rename and we'll call those bean group next I'm going to make sure that 
group of components is selected, I'm going to come up and click on the icon for the properties, the wrench. I'm going to first change the combine mode to add for these. I want them to add into the bottom of the dish when we create that in a moment. Next I'd like to tilt them up, as I mentioned, to give them a bit more definition around the back edge here. So I'm going to choose the tilt option, click on set anchor, and in the 2D view I'm going to click here just below the bottom bean and here just above the top bean. And then for the tilt, I'm just going to add a small amount, just maybe a little bit over one degree there, and that'll just tilt that up and add in a bit more definition. Now I'm going to hit close. I go back, look down the z-axis and zoom in again. What I want to do now is smooth these a little just to knock off some of the um, harder edges there. So with that selected, I'm going to come up, click on the icon to apply smoothing filter. It's going to tell me the component needs to be baked. In this case, I could easily recreate these components, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to make a safe copy of them. I'm just going to hit OK. And then I'm just going to do about a quarter of the way along the slider here, maybe a fifth to a quarter of the way along the slider, just to smooth out some of the edges there on the beans. When I'm happy with that, we can go ahead and hit OK there. Now let's create our dish shape. So I'm going to select this vector here, click on the icon to create shape from vectors. I want to make this a rounded shape. I'm going to stick with the 45 degree angle. I'm going to choose the option to limit the height of this. So I want it to flatten off when it gets to half an inch. And in here, we'll just enter the name dish, hit apply. Now we can see that's currently set to add. So that's going up from the plane here. I'm going to change that to subtract hit close and now we should be able to switch on all the components so if we right mouse click and go to show and show all let's just click on the ISO view let's just click in here and zoom to fit and zoom in just double click in the background to deselect that and at this point we've created all the components we need for our sign the last edit that I want to make is with the coffee beans here, maybe just to reposition them slightly and then just check their height. I need to make sure these are not higher than half an inch, otherwise they'll stick up above the top of the dish. Now we can see in the 2D view we've lost the grayscale for the beans under the grayscale for dish because that was created more recently. So I'm going to right mouse click on my bean group. I'm going to first choose rename and we'll just call that beans. And then I'm going to right mouse click on it, choose 2D preview, and say move to front so we can see the grayscale more prominently again. Then with that selected, I'm going to click on it again, and I'm just going to come to the bottom arrow here and click and just drag in order to make these a little bit larger and just move them over there in the design. I just need to make sure I'm happy with the position of those within the part. When I am, I need to check the height of them, so I'm going to come up and click on the properties, the wrench, we can see that the shape height for those is still less than half an inch so I know that they can sit in the bottom of the dish there and they won't stick out above the top edge of the part here. Another way I could double check that if I close this here would be to click to scale the Z height of the entire model and the maximum Z height should be half an inch which is the surface of this um, main component that we've got here. So if there was anything sticking out above that component then I would see a value in here that was larger um, than half an inch for my maximum Z. So I'm happy that everything is sitting within the dish or the, the um, pocket that we've got here and so when we machine this we'll be able to push this all the way up to the flat surface of our material. This point let's go ahead and hit OK. I'm just going to save the file. We'll go up to File, Save As, and in the project folder here, I'm going to save this and give it the name coffeesignmodel.crv3d, hit save and overwrite the one that's there. So if you wanted, you could open the file in the exact state that it's in at the moment. And we're going to continue working with this file in the next tutorial after this where we show you how to create the toolpaths for this example. Before we finish now, let's take a moment to summarise what we've looked at in this video. We started with the vectors that were created in the first section of this tutorial. Then we used a combination of the two rail sweep and the create shape tool in order to build the majority of our components. 
We also created a component by importing an image, which is the texture we can see in the background of the circular area of the site. As we built the shapes, we used various editing tools to adjust their height, to add tilt, to smooth them, and also in some cases we needed to change their position in the component tree list in order to change the composite model that we see in the 3D view. Now in the subsequent tutorial to this, we're going to take this design and we're going to calculate the toolpaths for it to actually cut this part on a CNC machine. That concludes this video.